working on ye old uh, side questing TV. Uh, where is it live? Is there a live? Oh, wait, it's live. Is it going? It looks like it's going. Hit the play button. We'll never know. Yeah, it's going. It's going. Can you see it? Can you see us I talking? Can, I can. I can see it. Yeah. It actually shows our video. Us talking. Yep. Yeah, and it's a little quiet, but it's it's audible if you have the volume cranked. But that also just might be my computer settings. Okay. Okay. But it's watch. going. There's video and audio. Oh, there we are. Okay, it looks good. It actually shows our video. Do you hear that? Sweet. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Side Quest, your wonderful weekly journey into video games from the team at www.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.w.
<clears throat> but once you get it in there, it uh, you know you get the software up and running. I mean, it's pretty pretty quick. It is the the move controllers are the really janky thing because I was trying to figure out how to use the move controllers because I want to do something like sketching using stuff like Gravity Sketch and and other things like that. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously you can't do room scale stuff with the PSVR controller, but you can do uh, you like everybody's recommendation was to get the PlayStation Eye camera because it was built for the move controllers, right? Or the move controllers mm-hmm. were built for the PSI, and so um, that's why I. I remembered that I had this thing and I had bought it with that really silly uh that book game remember that book game that they had Oh uh, yeah wonder spell or something, something like, like that. that it has just a big book of QR codes <laughs> and you could play like Harry Potter and like one other thing with that and that completely died um cuz it wasn't that good And it was going to revolutionize VR and then I never heard about it again Yeah uh AR augmented reality um so yeah uh, if you, apparently that's supposed to be like the best, uh, uh, the best thing for it. So, but that's that. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of work, but you can get there. You can get there, and it, but it is, it's janky as hell. There, it's not a good solution. If you can get a, if you can get Odyssey or Quest or whatever you want to get, I, I definitely get those. This is just for those of us who are trying to do it just for the hell of saying we did it. Yep. Um, speaking of stuff. Who wants to talk about what they've been playing? How about um, uh, Sam? You just unmuted yourself. How about you tell us what you've been playing? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just confirm the name of one of them real quick, so I don't um, recommend a game that doesn't exist. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So first of all, uh, finished uh, Super Crush KO. Um, okay. Still a great game. Uh, a little bit less play replayability than I would have thought. Um, now, be it, like, most of the stages I was able to get A or S rankings on the first time I went through it. Um, so that kind of diminishes the need to go back and get S rankings on stages if you've already completed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but even, like, uh, Graceful Explosion Machine, their previous game, had a bunch of, like, alternative stages, a bunch of stages linked together as different sort of, you know, different routes and stuff that you could take to... Uh, sort of add longevity to the game and add a couple more stages, even though it's just kind of remixed versions of the ones you already had. Um, Super Crush KO, at least currently, doesn't have any of those. Um, So I think it ends up being about five different worlds with about five or six stages each. Um, And it does feel a little bit light. Um, So, I mean, the game is priced accordingly. It's only $15, um, not on sale. So Um, you definitely, it's a smaller game, smaller package, but it, it did kind of feel like there should have been a little bit more um, or at least I wanted more out of uh, enjoying it so much. Um, other than that, uh, I've been playing Remnant from the Ashes with my Ooh. brother. Um, and man, that game is Dark Souls with guns. <laughs> um, and it, it is not a game that... It, it is a game where you can play casually for about 20 minutes, and then stuff really stops to starts to pop off. Or like My brother and I were just catching up or whatever and talking, and then like every five minutes it would just be... You know, oh yeah, how's your day going? And then somebody yelling, help, help! And like running away as they're like, yeah, getting wrecked by like 30 dudes chasing them down. Uh, so it's been fun. Uh, I, I'm not sure I, I would really enjoy it by myself. Um, I feel like it, it relies on sort of gunplay a lot. Um, and you do have physical attacks, but um, it, it seems a lot more dependent on that sort of gunplay, which is a little bit of a different take on the whole like Dark Souls. Is this the um, one that we saw um, at E3? Like a couple. Yes, of, yeah. Like, it's a year. it's made by Perfect World. Well, I'm not sure what the development team, but Perfect World's the publisher. We were um, we were we were gonna do something. Me and me you and Tom were gonna do something with yeah. that, and then we just never did. Yeah, I thought. there was there was a chance that we were getting um, a couple of codes from them, uh, and it's a three player game, so you can play um, three players uh, in the same world. Uh, and, and it does certainly have some like interesting like uh, sort of world interactions mm-hmm. like Dark Souls does. Uh, like the first, first of all, I think the worlds themselves are randomly generated. Now they have the same like you know, oh the Earth uh, biome has like fifteen stages or whatever, and you'll always have fifteen stages, but they won't always look the same. Um, and even I think there's like something like. 50 or 60 different bosses but each one of them has like something like uh, over like a couple hundred uh variants that could be uh laid upon that boss so every time you play it um it won't necessarily be the same thing and if we were to play 
like my campaign, uh, we might face the same boss, but it might be a completely different fight because he does different attacks and stuff like that. To where if we played your campaign, um, a different boss, or maybe not even the same boss, it could be a different one. Um, so there's some that stuff, and it also has like uh, world interaction stuff. Mm. So we we faced or we found this one guy who was like a cultist, and he had um, a I, I believe root is what they call those enemies, and he had a root mask. Um, and he didn't want to give it up, but a, my brother must have made some dialogue choice that pissed him off because he started fighting us. Um, so we ended up killing him and getting that mask. Uh, and then later there was a tree that was just talking gibberish. And I was like, As well, hold on. Let me. Do. Yeah, I was like, let me put on this mask uh, and talk to the tree because now I'm tree people. And uh, I talked to the tree and the tree was, yeah, hey, cool. Uh, uh, let me pick you up and give you power. And I was like, okay, cool. So the tree just picked me up and gave me an extra trait now that I have and my brother doesn't. Nice. Because I was the one that came up with the smart idea to talk to the tree while being a tree. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it seems like there are certain things that you do. Like, you don't, like, level up a character if, like... Per se, you're not seeing an XP bar. And it's like, oh, you're level one. Put that into stats. You're getting traits from different things that you do in the world. So, like, I've got that trait that now gives me, um, I believe it's called Bark Scan or something like mm -hmm. that. So that's a buff to my defense um, that I can put when I level up or I find these uh, level up tomes that I think are called, like, Wisdom Tomes or something on the ground. Um, I can use those to upgrade the traits that I currently possess. So I can buff my armor where my brother can't. But I believe he has one that's like specific to like fire damage because he found a perk for one of his weapons that can dish out fire damage. Um, so he has that trait because he's done enough fire damage to gain that trait. Um, so it seems like that that's really what it is. It's like you might play the same game and even have the same interactions in the game, but you will have a completely different character by the end because you're getting different traits for the different actions that you're taking and the different choices that you're making um, within the world that you're doing. Um, so that's cool. It has the same kind of regen system as Dark Souls. You're not collecting souls and trading that for stuff. Um, you're just like trying to get to the different checkpoints, but you have the same. It's not an essence flask. It's a jar. It's a Jarvan heart. Yeah, it's my cat who's causing problems. Uh, it's a dragon heart, um, and you have only a certain amount of ticks on those. But like, if if my brother were to die in combat, I could walk up to him and use one of my uh, dragon heart uh, things to revive him and heal him but then i have one less for me um so there's a it, it takes into consideration some of that teamwork stuff too um and you even get a trait that you only get if you're um gonna play with other people a teamwork trait and your certain stats get buffed when you're within range of your teammates and there's gear that uh that help those modifications or might boost some of those traits or even give you traits that you don't have um but and you know you have like two pieces of, out of the three of a gear set and it boosts that level. So it's got that RPG, it's got that Dark Souls and it's sort of just I mean so far has been pretty fun. The storyline could you know, whatever. It's the same thing as Dark Souls right? Like does anybody really know what's going on in those games? <laughs> no. As long as occasionally cool things happen on screen and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there's dark. one dude who makes like eight hour long YouTube videos uh, <laughs> that knows what's going on in those games. <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah it, it's interesting and we're gonna continue playing it i think we've made it through like the first like two bosses last night we got hung up on one and we were both just playing dumb so we're like all right let's call it a night and we'll get back at it like you do in dark souls games. like you do uh, yeah yeah um so yeah remnant from the ashes is what it's called i believe it's on pc and ps4 i don't know if it's on xbox um but i believe there is a console version awesome yeah i wow. i'm <clears throat> I think there's a console version. Yeah, it it was a game that looked really interesting to me um, when we first took a look at it last year. Uh, I think um, I don't know. I'd I'd like to definitely give it a shot for reals whenever I get a, a laptop that can handle it. Or you know, maybe, yeah, I think it's it, on it, it kind of has PS4, Xbox One. Yeah, it kind of has the same like at least design sensibilities as um, what was it, the Order eighteen ninety six or whatever, which they'll hopefully so make a sequel of. Yeah, so it's kind of got that steampunky, like gritty, like old school feel. But um, I believe it's kind of set in modern times. I think one of the things was like all this stuff started popping off around like 1986 or something. So uh -huh. it's not maybe as modern as it could be. So it's like a little bit stuck in the past, but like design wise, really cool so far. So nice. looking forward to playing more of that. Nice, 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 nice. Anything else on your uh, that you've been playing? 
No, I mean, like a sucker, um, like everybody else, when they see like one of their favorite games go on sale on Switch, you're like, oh, I've owned that game two gotta other ways, it, yep. but I got to buy it again. Uh, so I bought Celeste on Switch. So I'm okay. probably going to go back through and buy, like, <laughs> run through that because it was like $5 on sale. And I'm like, ah, I can run through Celeste again for five bucks. So. Sam, your cat has a crazy cough. No, that, that, <laughs> that was my partner. We're both sick. We're, uh, we're, you we're, got, you we're got all the coronavirus? Ill. Yes, yeah. No, I, I had a gut problem, and then I went to the doctor to get my gut problem checked, and I'm pretty sure I got sick while I was at the oh, doctor. Because no. <laughs> I was nice. feeling... I was feeling perfectly fine, and then I like came home that night uh, and was like, oh, "I'm gonna take my like new gut med they gave me." And then I was like, "Huh, my throat hurts." <laughs> and then the next morning, I woke up sick, and I was like, "How did I get sick from going to the doctor?" So, oh, geez. I have a bunch. Of, I have a bunch of friends um, that none of them know each other, and over the last forty-eight hours, uh, the coronavirus has come up in conversation, and every single one of them has called it the Fast and Furious virus. Oh, jeez. Because they just because they drank Coronas in those movies. Yeah, yeah. But my, my buddy uh, went to the doctor, and he uh, it turns out he has pneumonia. Uh, but like the first thing they asked him was like, w "Have you been to China? And, Were you in Wuhan?" Like, yeah, because it's like you know, it's like an air thing. It's like, "Have you been to China?" And like then the follow up question was like, "Has anything from China been shipped to you?" Has anything from China been in you? <laughs> Yeah, so like they they were like like giving him stuff, but now it's pneumonia, which is weird. I I never knew. I mean, I always figured it, but like he has to do these nebulizer treatments, which is basically like a vape rig, uh, of yeah. medicine. And like uh, I walked in, I like knocked on his office door the other day and popped in to ask him a question, and there he is in his office like vaping. And I was like, "Whoa, thanks for the invite, bud." Like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know it was cool to do drugs in the office anymore. <laughs> He's like, "Shut up, you don't want any of this." <laughs> oh jeez. So. Well, here's I just got the latest um, news flash just now. Breaking news: U.S. government. Six hundred. U.S. government says uh, the State Department elevates its warning and tells Americans not to travel to China at all. <laughs> so, hey, cool! It's zombie infestation is is literally happening before us right we're now. We're about they're about to break ten k. Yeah, gonna, gonna cancel that business trip I had planned. <laughs> yeah, I, I I usually I go to China like every other week, but I haven't I haven't gone. Are you? Yeah. It's really killing me. Uh, I guess it's better getting sick, though. I guess I just won't go to China. Yeah. I finally stopped my hacking, I th I think. I'm almost out of it. I've been, I had this, like, stupid hack cough. I've been, I am a hack, but I've had this stupid, like, dry heaving cough for the last three weeks since CES. <clears throat> and it's finally, like, cleared out. Now I'm just, like, clearing my throat because I've just had liquor. Uh, yeah. well, the FBI is going to be upset with all that hacking you've been doing too. <laughs> FBI, I call it dry hacking. <laughs> dry hacking. Dry top hacking. That. Dry top of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do cool. you guys see that? I don't. Uh, uh, all right, I'm Canadian, so I don't no, really like to. No. I don't. I, re, I don't like to get political, especially about American <laughs> stuff. So I'm. I'm trying not to really hard. But did you guys see that news article that part of that fucking border wall blew over? Did it really? No. Yeah, yes. that's, that's stupid as all hell. Some section, I think it was in San Antonio. Of course. Um, just of course high winds just blew over. I saw the video of people climbing that wall and how easy it is to climb that wall. Like they, yeah. they're like what they say, they can get up and over the wall in like tw like twenty seconds or something crazy like that. Some nine year old girl was just like, "You just do it like this." Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um, that's neither here nor there because it's, it's not here. Um, all right, cool. Well, uh, uh, e Ron, what have you been playing? Hey, hey, hi. Um, uh, I played a little bit more Temtem. Okay. Uh, that that game's still that. Um, the game's you know, still that. <laughs> okay. It's still Pokemon. Still yeah, Pokemon. pretty much. Uh, I still haven't tried it with anyone yet, so I really don't know how the multiplayer functions in that. But I think it just replaces like. Instead of you sending out two Pokemon, it, mm -hmm. you each just send one out, which is kind of cool. Um, other than that, I played a little bit of Hades. Oh, yeah. You were started, starting to play that. Yeah. Tell me about Hades. Yeah. I don't know anything about this game, actually. Uh, you're the... So, story-wise, you're the son of Hades. Okay. Um, God of the Underworld. And you're like, I want to get out of here. Familiar with his work. Yeah. Uh, you're like, I, I don't like it down here. It sucks. I want to leave. And then Hades is like, no, you have to stay here. And you're like, screw you, dad. And then you leave <laughs> and you have to fight your way out. And then it's a roguelike. Um, 
it plays really well like mechanically like it's it's snappy and it looks really good like the art's really good and the voice acting's really cool uh i've only made it to the first boss and i have not beat the first boss yet um, yeah that's a hump the first time you get there it's she gets way easier the more like you deal with it but man that hump's a big one the first time yeah i think part of the problem is i don't really know i don't know the limitations of the dash yet mm. um so it's like like i thought maybe i could dash through those and not take damage but it seemed like maybe i was taking damage but i'm not sure maybe i need an ability but um I have the same problem with that game that I have with like, like Bastion, um, in that I really like the starter weapon and I don't like any of the other weapons in that game. Um, th so far, I've got I've got a bow and I've got a shield and I've got a spear, um, and I don't like any of them. But you start with a sword and the sword does really well. Um, it's really nice. It's, it's fun to play with the sword. So I'm gonna keep playing it and see how far I can get. Um, I got tempted because I kept seeing, I kept seeing people on Twitter being like, "I just, uh, I just beat my first ultra mega death new game plus triple X run," and I'm like, "What the fuck are they talking about? What, what game is this?" And then it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it goes on sale like every time they do like a, a holiday sale on Steam, mm -hmm. um, it drops down to like below twenty five bucks. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll get it." It works, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. That's all I got. I picked up a couple other things in the Steam sale yet, but I haven't played them yet. I picked up uh I picked up uh Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, which is a JRPG and is apparently like one of the longest JRPGs ever made. Really? Yeah. So it's like an average um, length of 350 that, hours. That is not a selling point for an RPG for me. Longer <laughs> than anymore, anything right? else you've ever fucking played. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I haven't started. Will melt and bleed. That's why I haven't started it yet, and I also picked up Tales of Berseria, oh. which is another which is another JRPG, um, and I actually like the Tales series. I just haven't played this one yet, so hmm. so those are sure. those are waiting in the wings. I'm not sure I've played a Tales game since Tales of Symphonia, oh, which I is on Steam now. Tales of Symphonia back in the day. I mean, it was a pretty basic JRPG, but it, it was fine. Is is Vesperia the sequel to that? Which one's the like? Because as far as I know, Tales of Symphonia has a direct sequel. But I'm not sure it's called Tales of Symphonia 2. Um, so I played Tales of Vesperia, and I I don't think it's the sequel to Symphonia. Maybe that was Zestiria. Because hmm. they're, I, I, yeah, again, I'm not sure exactly which one it is, and I'm not sure they like, you know, on the box would tell you it's a sequel. But if I remember right, the protagonist and like a couple of the other characters that you play as in Tales of Symphonia are characters in one Fantasia. Of Fantasia. Okay. Yeah, Fantasia. and I'm not sure they were like, I'm not sure on face value they told you it was a direct sequel, but like it's, you know, set in the same universe and there are the same characters like 10, 15 years later after. Was it Fantasia? Uh, yeah. So there's apparently, uh, I just did a quick Google. There's apparently, there's Tales of Symphonia and then there's Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World. Hmm. Um... Hmm. And then this here also says, uh, it says it's not a sequel, but it's uh, it, Symphonia and Fantasia are set in the same uh, same timeline as the first Tales game. Or Tales of Fantasia is the first game, and it's set in the same timeline as Symphonia, but they're not sequels to each other. And then there was uh, Tales of the Abyss, which was just like a grab bag of all the characters from all the games. But... Uh, I've, yeah, I don't I haven't know. played a Tales game in so long. What, what was the one that was... Was it Vesperia that was just uh, re-released, like an HD version, or...? Vesperia was the one that everybody loved. Yeah, that was just like, re-released, like, last year, right? Yeah, like, Symphonia is the one that, like, like the hardcore video game nerds, like, rave about. Like, like it's like, the, the it's the version. game. I think it came out mm -hmm. on PS2 and then PS3. They made, they made an HD version of that, too, I think, right? Yeah, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition came out uh, 10th of January 2019. Okay. I gotta. I'm one day I'll pick that up. One day on my giant ass backlog. Well, I'll get into what I've been playing. Uh, I've been. Hey, what's I've, up? I've been crying because I'm trying to figure out what the hell I want to do with this giant ass backlog because um, <clears throat> I'm at the point in my life right now where I realize that I really want to get into streaming and I really want to get into like more production and stuff, and I can't really spend time <laughs> setting shit up. If uh, I'm p trying to play catch up my backlog, which continues to grow, obviously you guys know my backlog grows like there's like nobody's business. 
Um, Do you follow uh, uh, Chris Ligman on Twitter? Yes. Yes. He's been doing. Have you seen? Have you been following his his game tastings? No. No. I'm pretty game sure. It, I'm pretty sure it's him that's doing it. But he's somebody else who also has a massive backlog, and so he set up basically his whole backlog, and he just he charted it out, and he plays two hours of a game every day. That's... And if he okay. and if he wants to, if he goes over two hours, he might put that game aside to go back to it. But at the two hour mark, he stops. Oh, Chris is from uh, Critical Distance. Okay, cool. cool, cool. Yeah, I I'm might, pretty sure um, it's I might have to do that because uh, <clears throat> what I was kind of thinking of doing was playing like maybe a, yeah playing a couple hours of all these different games that i have and then realizing like i'm never going to i'm never going to fucking finish prey so why do i have it <laughs> um i'll just keep racking up games on my playstation plus cuz a lot of the games i have eventually show up on ps plus the uh uncharted collection the bioshock collection have both them mm. they're both on P- ps plus right now i think uncharted collection is on there now bioshock collection is on there like next week for february um so i can sell both of these collections there's no reason to keep those around, but, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I might have to do that play two to three hours and then that's it type of thing. The only have issue a, have I have, a little taste, well, yeah, a taste, a taste. Um, the only issue I have with that is I'm not a, I wouldn't call myself a completionist, like in terms of getting everything in a game. I'm a completionist, completionist in terms of if I have a game that I've bought, I'm going to finish it. Because I put whatever amount of money, from $7 to $70, I feel like I kind of owe it to myself to finish it. Like, right now, I'm staring at my PlayStation Classic and the Genesis Classic, the little mini consoles for both those. And I think I should crack those open and (laughs) plug them in and give them a shot and play a couple of the games. Do I have to finish those games? No, not at all. But, you know, I could probably play a little bit of Sonic or Golden Axe or whatever Crash Bandicoot was on the on the playstation or twisted metal and and call it a day it's kind of fun to have um but i won't i probably will not play those this year even though i'm staring at them because as i was i have this tendency somebody mentioned it on uh on twitter earlier um as i revealed i have this tendency of just finding cool shit around my house well i found my playstation vita tv also known as the playstation tv uh and um i thought oh shit i have the ps tv i wonder if there are any games loaded on this thing so it doesn't have a memory card. I never bought a memory card for it. But plug it in. Sure as shit. There's a bunch of uh, Vita games that I had downloaded. I think it has like one gig of internal memory. So I had a few things on there like Plants for Zombies and a couple other things. But PlayStation Plus allowed for <clears throat> some really cool games to pop up in the Vita. Stuff like Chrono Cross which is pretty awesome. I love that PlayStation game, um, the sequel to Chrono Trigger. And uh, mm-hmm. the other one, which I found, which is only like 200 megs, Final Fantasy Tactics, I think it's War of the Lions, which is like a, it was the PlayStation, P, the PSP version of that game. And so the extra I was modes like, and multiplayer. What's Yeah. Is that what it was? It was multiplayer? Well, yeah. anyways, um, I thought, oh shit, I got to download these and, and pop them on here. And then I got... Final Fantasy Tactics on there, but then I realized I should probably get the uh, Chrono Cross because I really loved Chrono Cross back in the day, collecting all those all those characters and stuff. And there were like a bunch of games. If you scroll through PlayStation Plus, your like download list, you'll see everything on there for for the stuff that actually works in the Vita TV. And uh, yeah, and then Mike, um, good friend of the show, Mike Wayner said, uh, former side quester, Mike Wayner said I should probably get a. They actually sell these adapters for the Vita. <clears throat> which you you actually put it in the Vita's, uh, not the memory card slot, but in the game card slot. And uh, you can put a micro SD card or a, you know SD mini card, whatever, in there. So I can use the micro SD card that I wasn't using from the Switch, the old like one gig or two gig micro SD, or whatever, like the 32 gig micro SD cards, and actually plug it into this P- PlayStation Vita and download all those games. So I'm kind of excited to, to do that over the next few days and realize what kind of stuff I have. But... The ones I will. I, like a, what's that? I will say, that although that is a possibility, that does require you to jailbreak the system to use. Is that which is, is that, it? You have to. It's do- not. It's not hard. Um, I actually just went through the process of doing it to a Vita, and it's the exact same. 
Okay. So, but it is probably about 20 to 30 minutes worth of work, just so you're aware. All right. I'll take a look at it. Is it one of those plug it into your laptop type of things? Or No, it's – it's um, it's um, if I remember correctly, you have to uh, – I'm trying to think. It depends on what version mm. of software it has on it because uh, if, it, if it's a newer version of the software, you have to go back and, like, flash it with a different firmware. Okay. So that adds a couple of times – a little bit of time. But, like, yeah. I think you can do everything off of the system itself. You just have to connect to a website. It's like how – if you remember how they used to jailbreak Wii's, yeah. um, you had to, like, go to a website and it downloaded, the, like, a, a special package for uh, you or something like that. And you, you booted it up and then sure. you just ran the thing. And, you know, it, it's a process, but, like, there's in so many instructions on the Internet and videos that – That'll show you. Know, you. Okay. Well, I'll, nice I'll, I'll go through that process then because I think it would uh... be fun to get it working. I I also have a plan. What's that? Pull your kid out of school, put her in a room with your whole backlog, make her play a couple hours of every game, and then she can just tell you if you liked it or not. <laughs> Film it, profit. Film it, and then profit. So, anyways, yeah. So I have this Vita now that I can start to take a look at or sell it because those things are going for a ton of fucking money online. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then yeah, I'm like, I'm thinking. There's not a lot of stuff that's really super interesting me from a purchase wise over the next month, right? February, everything starts to hit really kind of feels like everything's really starting to hit in March, uh, animal crossing, which we'll get to in a second. So I might start going through and just doing these little tastings, but I, that's what I was thinking. I might just play like an hour to two hours to three hours a day of each game um, of different games and kind of get an idea for, which ones I'm really sort of interested in. Are they gripping me early on? Are they not? And then quite literally just get rid of the ones that I'm not playing because I see the... It's almost like I see my my fucking backlog and it's daunting. And then I'll be like, well, fuck that. Uh, I don't feel like trying to chip away at the, at the backlog today. I'll just play Pokemon or Smash Brothers again or Mario Kart. <laughs> and that's what I end up doing. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe the tastings... Um, <clears throat> Maybe that's the way to do it because I can. I actually did that on the Switch. I had a bajillion games, like downloaded games. That I I'd bought a bunch of those, like one ninety nine games and ninety nine cent games. The thing about the Switch is there's so much crap on there, shovelware that people are throwing. You'll have a game that'll launch on the eShop for like nineteen ninety nine, and then two days later they'll drop the price to like forty eight cents or something dumb like that because it'll make everybody go out and buy it, and then they'll jack the price back up to nineteen ninety nine. Um, there's a trick right there if you're trying to get your game listed high on platforms. So I bought a bunch of those and I played them all um, like within like a two day span. I just played like 15 to 20 minutes of those a bunch of those games. I probably played like 30 games in about 24 hours, I should say, and uh, over over the Christmas or the holiday break, and was able to delete all of them off my off my Switch. I was kind of happy doing that. So yeah, maybe that's uh basically what i got to do with the, the consoles the only problem with doing it on a console is that there is before you start the game you have to download some some massive updates so it's like all right well, i'll hit the button here and you know an hour of my three hours or two hour time will be downloading whatever fucking update i have to download so who knows but uh anyways what i have been playing um apart from ring fit and pokemans and mario kart tour is um i got into <clears throat> good old classic puzzle quest on the switch it's finally out on the switch i loved puzzle quest that match three ish game on the ds and i think it's on ios and a bunch of other things it's everywhere it's everywhere being on the switch it's just it's just it's just a good a good dumb puzzle rpg i loved it back when it first released the first puzzle quest because they made a sequel that was like a space-based version and it was not very good but the first one's great Still, I think it may have been my favorite game that year, whatever year it was, like 2011 or... No, like 20, 2009 or something like that, 2008, 2009. Um, either way, it still it still holds up. It still holds up surprisingly. So, yeah, Puzzle Quest. Who'd have thought that... Uh, and it has all the DLC, DLC and expansions and stuff baked into it too. So, definitely recommend um, folks pick that up. But that's it. That's... Just kind of been chipping away at a little bit of everything and taste testing all the stuff that I have to do. I will say this: speaking of Ring Fit Adventure, I'm probably like a week, less than a week away of fully completing the the adventure mode 
in that game, which makes me kind of sad because that was a and I'll be playing it right after this is this podcast over. The driving factor for me to play Ring Fit Adventure every night for between like thirty to fifty minutes to an hour is that stupid story mode. And I know Ryan Gann made fun of me about it, but then he started playing Ring Fit Adventure as well. And I've noticed, uh, <laughs> you know, he's starting to put some time into it too. And we chatted and he's liking that. He can understand why I'm sort of weirdly addicted to that story mode. So I'm kind of bummed that it'll end. I'm almost hoping that it will like reloop back on itself um, with, you know, harder harder enemies and stuff. Because I've poured like 65 hours in the, in the Ring Fit and like a new game plus type like thing a new game plus type of thing yeah i'll keep everything that i have but it just jacks up the difficulty uh either that or they release dlc or um or the snyder cut or the snyder cut or yeah the snyder cut the batman versus Superman dlc or they make like hey by the way you can get you can play like a mario game or you can play a zelda game or here's dragon quest or something dumb with the ring fit adventure type of thing because i think that would be that actually be pretty cool for um you know for folks that are that are fitness buffs and i guess that that game it's selling like crazy nintendo had their they released their numbers from sales over the last year i think through december and december and ring fit was one of their top selling games in 2019 uh so yeah i'm fucking still playing that but that's basically it i uh before i move on to news i forgot one thing i was playing technically (laughs) so my friend is playing minecraft right okay and she uh she's playing like some mod pack or a bunch of them mm-hmm. but this one particular mod pack adds minecraft or not minecraft adds minesweeper into the game hmm. but she's really bad at minesweeper sweeper so she hits me up the other day and she goes hey do you know can you teach me how to play minesweeper like i just can't get my head around it and i'm like yeah so she's like all right here's a screenshot and it's like a full like board in the game mm-hmm. Like, every space is, like, essentially, like, your Minecraft character size, and you walk around and play Minesweeper. Hmm. So I start teaching her, and she's like, yeah, I just, I don't get it. How are you doing this? I I don't know if I've ever told this on the podcast before. I used to speedrun Minesweeper. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Do it again. That's awesome. (laughs) So she got me... She got me that, like, I got the bug again, and I went to pull Minesweeper up. Minesweeper on Windows 10 is dog shit. Hmm. <laughs> how can it's it be like, worse? They like they oh, yeah, messed. They like added animation to it, and there's oh, ads in no. it and stuff oh, like that. Weird. That's the Snyder cut of fucking Minesweeper. It's Same like thing with Solitaire. Those, it's like when they made all those uh, Final Fantasy, those Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games for iOS, where they like f- real, they just like Photoshop fucked with the uh, the graphic styles like hey let's give it to an intern to add gradation on each character it seems like they did that with minesweeper shit uh, it's, it's awful they added a bunch of modes and you it's like there's like an adventure mode and if you if you fail like three boards or four boards or something all of a sudden they're like hey you want to spend a little bit of money hmm. it's like no i don't want to spend a little bit of money it's fucking minesweeper but uh yeah anyway so i've also been playing minesweeper through somebody via screenshot oh my so gosh. That's yeah. awesome and terrifying and also awesome. Screenshots and paint, man. Yep. Screenshots and paint. MS Paint, which does not have microtransactions yet. Um, hey, what's up with the news? What's up with the news? There's a lot of news. Oh, there's so, there's so much news. There's so much news. Do you want to start with the news? Yeah. I mean, let's start off. You know what? Let's start off with the biggest story, and then we can wind down from yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, they're making an Animal Crossing Switch. That is actually a fucking huge ass. <laughs> Sam, you... Sam, what do you think about this my Animal Crossing version of the Switch? I'm just gonna mute myself. Uh, you guys go wild. I already have it pre-ordered. Listen, my partner was very upset that we didn't get the Pop Tart uh, 3DS when it came out. Um, the so Pop Tart 3DS. Was, I was told uh, uh, under no uncertain circumstances that uh, we would absolutely be getting any form of uh, a Animal Crossing Switch that was released. And luckily for me, uh, it does look very nice. It is yeah. very pastel. So it's got like teal teal and blue pastel controllers and like a white cream colored base. Yeah, they're, oh. they're also two-tones, so the backs of them are white, which they don't really point out unless yeah. you look at yeah. the, like, the back shot, which also has like texture 
um, to it and a little bit of, uh, I think they're like a little beach scene on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like some little tents and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Timmy, Tommy, and your uh, favorite Tom Nook are on the front being like, come hang out with us on the island. Uh, Lone and, shark. Uh, yeah, the Lone Shark himself. Uh, however, pulling the weirdly new trend of Nintendo where it's like, hey, you're so excited for Animal Crossing, buy this Animal Crossing Switch, but it doesn't come with a copy of the game. Yeah. And it comes uh, out seven Nintendo. days before the system or before the game does. Which I get where you're like, okay, well, make sure you own your Switch and it's updated and ready to go when you pop that cartridge in. Because I know you're a Nintendo fan and you're getting physical, right? Mm. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it seems it seems like oddly weird that they've been doing physical. that. Because they did that with the um, the Switch Lite for Pokemon Sword and Shield also. It came out about a week early, um, didn't have a copy of the game. And they also did that for the uh, Pokemon Let's Go series with... Um, mm the EV and Pikachu consoles. Uh, they uh, released them a week or two before the games actually came out, didn't have a version of that bundled in. So, yeah, if interesting take. If there are take, ever but... some fucking Joy-Con that I would murder somebody for, it would be these, because they, <laughs> they look gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that they're going to come out with... Uh, it seems like... All, like if bought the Splatoon Switch, mm -hmm. they came out with uh, those controllers, but they were reversed. So if you bought them, then you had like a full pink set and you had a full line of the lime green set. Um, so you could just have those. So I'm hoping what they do um, is they just release those colors, but in reverse separately so you can buy them at the store. So then you can have an all yes. pastel Switch or an all uh, lime pastels but I'm, they're both pastels so both pastel blue I'm or green i'm just bummed that the actual switch itself is still black like you slide yeah, the, the controllers back on it. and there's like you know they have a little bit of cream details to them and stuff and they're like in their pastel but the actual switch is still black yeah and I, I mean the back of it i would be fine with if it if they kept it that black but like at least the sort of yeah. um the sort of plastic on the front they really should have tried to make it maybe that cream color mm -hmm. too but Hey, I'm not gonna complain because I'm all I've already pre-ordered one for Best Buy. So yeah, um, Best Buy yeah. has it. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Yes, uh, I believe it's currently up um, at the time of this posting uh, at Best Buy, Target, and um, GameStop, but okay. it has not gone up on Amazon. Yet, so. All right. Yeah, I'm. <sighs> I need a new my the fan on my Switch sounds like a jet engine t like a Boeing seven thirty seven Max about to take off. Ooh, that was that a bad joke? Um, the uh, so I don't know if 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 you've had fan issues with with your Switch at all, Sam, but mine is so freaking loud and that stupid little leg, this dumbass little leg. You see there there. What, look at this. Oh yeah. It oh yeah, that, those suckers just pop falls right. Falls off on. nonstop. So. Um, yeah, so, I yeah. I've so far been lucky. I you know I I have a launch switch, but I didn't have any of the issues that people were having where like they were sort of bending in the uh, docks. Some people had that issue right off the bat. Um, I haven't had any issues of Joy-Con drift um, that people seem to be having. Now I feel like that's just inev inevitability. Of I time. have um, Joy-Con um, drift with the first set of Joy-Cons. The other Joy-Cons, I was actually surprised that I was able to. Um, uh, Everything else was just kind of recalibrating, but th those initial Joy Cons, I'm still getting some some drift. Yeah, I had an issue where I thought one of them was doing that, uh, like the F Joy Con was having a hard time connecting to the system. Mm -hmm. But um, that was more of I just realized at the time I was leaving the Switch like dock behind like a TV, so it was just a trans uh, mm -hmm. transmission issue, uh, just being like right outside of the range that those things had. Um, and I, I, I mean, I mostly use my Switch docked uh, with a Pro Controller anyway, so uh, I don't, I don't oh, much yeah, okay. use the Joy Cons. So, you know, if I'm going somewhere, or if we're going, you know, we're going to a friend's house, we're taking Mario Kart with us, or something like that, we might end up using the Joy Cons more. But yeah, we primarily both play with Pro Controllers, so Very um, cool. don't really have too many issues. But yeah, so that's, Animal that's Cross coming out the week before. Uh, was they said the 13th? That's coming out. Yes, yeah. Uh, available uh, three thirteen for two hundred and ninety nine dollars price of Switch. Nice, 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 nice. Um, anything else, Aaron? Besides being nope. muted? Nope. Well, I got a couple quick ones actually. <laughs> there's, um, there, I mean, there were some. Yeah, some. There were some that I just didn't include because it felt like beating a dead horse a little bit. Like well, definitely uh, beating a dead horse is the Uncharted movies delayed again. So that's now coming out in twenty twenty one. 
like yep. May 2021 or something. Apparently, it was scheduled for December 2020, which they haven't even started filming it yet. Probably a good idea to delay it. So, anyways, that's coming out May 2020. Maybe a good idea. And then there was, speaking of Switch stuff, um, I'll throw this in here. They finally detailed that Pokemon Home. Uh, oh, yeah. Which uh, some people are pissed off about because there's, a, there's a, a console app and there's a 3DS app. And then there's a mobile app, and they all have very different functionality. Like, let me just give you guys uh, an example right now. The checklist that I'm staring at right now that shows differences between the Switch version and the mobile version has um, essentially green check marks on one side and red, and the corresponding check mark on the other version is red. So it's basically you're either either or you're going to have to have both of these stupid things to. Uh, you know, apps all over the place to get the function. I, I, Nintendo can't seem to make stuff all work on one device, but Nintendo's super good at the internet, you yeah, guys. Yeah, they'll figure it out. But uh, I think the the big thing for this was they're really kind of treating Sword and Shield as the um, the launching pad for their next, you know, for Pokemon going forward, obviously, and not. It's like they're they're sort of ending the previous all those gen you know seven generations six or seven generations of pokemon and saying that was great that was fun we're starting new however you can upload those previous pokemon um into uh pokemon bank on your 3ds so let's say all those pokemon you had on uh, the 3ds version or the ds version or you know the game boy advance version that kind of stuff um, or the Game Boy version. You can get those into Pokemon Bank on your 3DS. And then Pokemon Bank can actually upload to uh, Pokemon Home. So you can transfer all that stuff into Pokemon Home. Cool. You can't pull it back down once it's up there, but that's fine because everyone's kind of finished playing those games. Um, although I do kind of feel like there could be a sales boom for a lot of those older games as people are waiting for stuff to start to appear in Sword and Shield. I You know... They, I, I kind of sense that folks might be going back to some of those games to capture some of those Pokemon that aren't available yet. Uh, but uh, So, yeah, it's kind of a one-way deal that way. And then Pokemon Let's Go, which is the kind of the previous Switch version, you can upload – you can use the Pokemon Home to send – you know, to store the Pokemon for the Let's Go games. However, the minute those, those Pokemon go into Sword and Shield, you can't back them out into Home. So um, – and then Pokemon Go on the phones will actually also allow you to transfer Pokemon into uh, into home for those of us who have like 600 Pokemon captured on their um, Pokemon Go thing. So, um, I mean, I have I have 830. Yeah, suck my. Um, anyway, I don't uh, actually know how many Pokemon there are. Was I close? I have no idea. How yeah, I think many on, the, on Pokemon, Pokemon Go? There's there. like 900 Pokemon, maybe. 807. I have more Pokemon than there are. Oh, nice. Um, uh, I have 21 Pikachu. Yes, but they're also are, my band name. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, anyways, yeah, yeah, they'll be able to like do a lot of different. Uh, you know, people will be able to finally move all their Pokemon into Pokemon Home, and that's coming in the beginning of February, and. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Who knows if the mystery dungeon games will even interface with that? But yeah, that's have you guys ever like um, had the desire to be moving your entire collection from like one game to another? Because I know there was like already articles that have been going up. That's like in theory, this is how you would move your like Pokemon from like the original Game yeah. Boy games all the way up to this. Yeah. Um, and like I just you know maybe maybe we did when like Gold and Silver was out on Game Boy, but for the life of me, I could not remember being like, oh sweet, I can't wait to transfer my Venusaur like up to this specific game because I've really got to keep Venusaur who I've had since I was like eight years old. I think uh, this at, specific at amount is sort of like a weird it's like just weird sentimental value for anybody that's really doing it because <clears> you can you can cap. You can just recapture a Venusaur, and you're you actually gaining well, more like, points and shit if you do it. But it, well, here's the craziest part: there's there's enough games because they come out in pairs in general. Mm-hmm. That if you tr- if you transferred up just your starter, like your whatever wherever that is, mm-hmm. um, on those games, if you transfer them all all the way up to the newest game, you couldn't even run a whole team of them because you'd have too many. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't even know. I think Charizard, well, the Charmander, Charmeleon family, 
are the only ones that are in Sword and Shield, hmm. right? I don't think Venazar, or, uh, Bulbazar and uh, Squirtle are even in that game. Yeah, I don't think they're in there yet. <sighs> I had, um, just to kind of test how Pokemon, tr- you know, transferred back and forth back for Pokemon Bank. Um, <clears throat> so, like, I, like m- most people out there, or many people out there, I'd always start playing a Pokemon, capture a couple Pokemon, last like two hours in a pokemon game and then kind of give up and i did that for the majority of pokemon games that i've that i've owned and played um and i'll have like 30 to 40 pokemon before i finally quit but i used pokemon bank for sun and moon and uh transferred a bunch of my pokemon into there and then forgot to like resubscribe so i think all my pokemon that i have transferred in there like some of the shinies and stuff are gone (laughs) So whatever, that was like five bucks a year or something stupid like that, and I didn't resubscribe to that. But anyways, Pokemon Home's coming. That's a thing. And I uh, let's see here. That's the only other thing I had was the ESA saying that they're gonna make big changes to E three the E three experience. Um, Please, I wish they say every year. Which they say every year. Was that Sam? I said, please forgive us, is what that basically said. That's basically, that the, yeah. They said, the end, hey, like, we're aware of all the chatter. I don't know. Please, please come to our show. Please, yeah, somebody please, come to our show. Please, please make us as cool as Gamescom. <laughs> or PAX. Or PAX. Be better. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the only other, that's the only news message that I had. New stuff. Uh, I, I have two that I'll sneak yep. in here. Um, sneak since, in again, here. we are still talking about the Switch. Uh, Nintendo did have an investor call. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, it's okay. still going on as we speak. Oh, interesting. Um, the one chunk, now this didn't come out of the investor call, but I did see today that the lifetime sales of the Switch have now surpassed the Xbox One. Um, okay. So it is now 53.4 million units sold or yeah, something like that. Um, and it did it in obviously half the time it's been available, um, which is uh, some pretty incredible stuff. Uh, but also they have said that they currently have no intention of releasing a new model of the Switch in 2020. Now, uh, as Dally pointed out pre-show, uh, I believe they said the exact same thing last year. And then about a month later, here's the uh, Switch Lite. So uh, enjoy. Um, so, you know, with Nintendo always being very vague, <clears throat> I, I think they, again, they've mentioned they've got a couple of Wii U ports on the way. Um but other than in other news, uh, Behemoth came out tonight um, and said that they are, of course, working on a new game. However, this game is uh, entitled Alien Hominid Invasion. So it is a reinvention of Alien Hominid HD um, and will feature brand new gameplay, progression, mechanics, and more. Um, and will probably come out on the Switch because <laughs> every game does now. Every game does. Um, <clears throat> So yes, yeah, so if you were a big Alien Hominid fan, I assume this is going to have the same sort of like level of multiplayer in it and uh, probably give you another uh, experience of that sort of content. Plus, I would assume that they've designed a, a bunch of new levels um, and stuff like that. Since I, if I remember right, Alien Hominid, although a good game, was very tough and uh, overall was kind of short because of it. Um, so yeah, there will be plenty of that, uh, and hopefully it takes them less than like the eight years or so that they took on the last uh, <laughs> project of theirs, which I, I didn't even play. Have you guys played um, uh, Pit People? Is that what it was ended up being called? Pit People? No, I haven't. I I remember it, but I didn't play it. I think I played it at PAX. That was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm sure I sat it. down and uh, played it once. I did enjoy uh, the one before that, which was like um, a weird. You were performing for cats, if I remember right. Um, okay, I, what? Excuse me, I'm on board. Yeah, it's uh, no, you were playing like a normal game. Cats, like the movie. Uh, yeah, hold on, let me let me search what that game was called. Um, but like it like had the motif of like you were stranded on an island, um, and the only way to escape was like to perform for um these cats, and it was like a platformer, um, and had like uh different challenges in these platform a battle battle block theater. Hmm. Oh block. yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Um. Yeah, and if I believe it, it was mean cats that uh, made you dance for their pleasure. Uh, and then I think you fought a giant cat at the end. I don't know. It's been, yeah, I, that, I, that game came out while I was in college. We beat that game while I was in college. April 3rd, really? I thought that, April 3rd, 2013. I thought that came out sooner than that, or earlier. But yeah, 
uh, Behemoth always makes really good games, uh, and they're the indie darling of PAX because they provide uh, breakfast <laughs> to everybody on day <laughs> one for press day. So yes. big shout out to Behemoth, even though by the time I get there, all they've got is like uh, apple juice left. So, but I enjoy that apple juice every year. Uh, uh, just go ahead. I was just gonna say one other Nintendo thing. Uh, they they are finally ceasing uh, repairs on the Nintendo Wii. Oh darn! In tw- in March of twenty twenty. Yes. Um. Yeah. The Wii will also be getting its last uh, official game release with just Dance twenty twenty, if I remember correctly. Yeah. 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 Um. What's interesting? Salute. Is... <laughs> Rip in peace. Rip in uh, peace. <laughs> the Wii. You did. You did good. You did good. You did good. You did good Wii. There's going to be at least like the day after that uh, service thing expires. There's going to be at least one like retirement home that's like. Oh no, the Wii broke. We'll never have Wii bowling again. <laughs> yeah, I guess we gotta watch this church on Sunday Why again. Why is there still not a Wii Sports on, on or like Switch Sports or something on the Switch? Because that would be seems like a no brainer. I yeah. um, I still don't think that we're gonna get a, a more power. The more I think about the Switch, I don't think we'll get a more powerful <laughs> Switch this year. What's that? I just, I was just thinking about what is on the Switch that you could make people in a senior's home play, and I started thinking about one two Switch, oh, and I was just, pic- I was just picturing <laughs> these two septuagenarians playing the draw game, except oh, instead God. of it's instead of being off by hundreds of a second, it's like <gasps> full seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I made myself laugh. The you know the Wii U ports that everybody's talking about. The one game that I want ported Pikmin and it's 3. never going to happen is uh, well, Pikmin Three might actually happen, but uh, is uh, Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land was like the tech demo game for yes. the Wii U, and that game that game was a great multiplayer game. I think you and um, I have talked about how much we absolutely love that game. Yeah, I I wish I wish there was a way that they could bring it to Switch, but the only way I can even think about that being possible to do is if you had two Switches and you used like that ad hoc mode, um, oh, where you yeah, could have that's like right. the yeah. one Switch have like one display and on the TV had a number because that that game was very dependent on um, the sort of like four v one and the sort of experiences where the gamepad player was playing one type of game where everybody else was playing another. Um, and that game has the best Animal Crossing spinoff totally where you run does. around and you have to, it, it's like Hungry Hungry Hippos and you run around and you try to grab marbles and throw them into your mouth. But the more marbles you have, the slower you run. And then the person on the game pad can uh, uh, see the whole map uh, and they like use both of the thumb pad or both of the thumbsticks individually to play as the dogs. And you run around as the dogs like trying to jump. Um, but the other <laughs> players can like, uh, uh, leak uh marbles out of their head to go faster so you're basically just chasing them down with these dogs and then you just see people go oh crap and they're like spitting out balls <laughs> as they're down. it's so it's so good that game is so good and like it'll never it's stuck to the wii u and there's like maybe 200 people that played it and it's phenomenal i love it you should you should stream it for side questing there we go i still have my uh i'm staring at the elgato over here that i did use to, to let's, get, could, let's get a bunch of Wii U's. Let's do it. I could get the camera set up, but uh, I only have five megabits up, so that is not going to happen for me anytime Oof. soon. I keep getting... Let me let me call out... Uh, I'm not going to say the individual uh, partner because that might give away my location, um, but let me call out Comcast and say, you, can, you need to stop sending me flyers telling me that there's faster internet available in my area when every time I call, you tell me there's not. Because it's been a real problem over the last like three years or so. And I, I've gotten to the point now that the next time I get one of those flyers, if I call and I can't upgrade my internet, I'm going to call on the daily just to bug them until they figure it out and actually get internet faster out to me. Because I'm struggling with 12 megabits down at this point. And like, honestly, I would rather pay Verizon an obscene amount of money to have a, like, a mobile hotspot in the middle of my house than uh, pay like local internet prices for what is essentially uh, a newspaper floating by of what web page is loading. So Comcast, get it together. Get it together, Comcast. <laughs> play it play it super dumb. Just call them and be like, I'd like internet, please. Oh, we don't service your area. Oh, but you sent me a flyer. Mm-hmm. I've got it right here. 
And then just as they start denying, you just start reading off the flyer and do that every day. <laughs> well, I, I told you guys uh, what happened to us in uh, when I was in college, right? We used to call it getting Comcasted, um, where we were. We used to, it was when League of Legends. I mean, it's still huge, but we were as a as a house in college. Like all five of us played League of Legends, <laughs> so we would we would uh, group as a team and try to play ranked. And we were good. We were a good five man, but at, like probably about 20 minutes into every single game comcast would die and we would all disconnect from the game and then that meant it was like automatically we lost because we couldn't reconnect in time are you uh, are you on the east coast yes so you know that they were they got caught and got in trouble for actively throttling league of legends right really correct yeah that. and that that was that that came out like two or three years after we had graduated and we like i mean we still kind of played league at that time but like certainly not as a five man like that we used to um yeah there there was a big thing uh and then there was the one time where our uh internet didn't work um and we called up well at we were at a different house at that time and verizon was who provided the internet we called up verizon and we're like hey the internet doesn't work and they were like yeah we're all out of internet and <laughs> we were like what do you mean you're all out of internet? it's like yeah we don't have anything, none we can give you and he's like well, can you check in the back? Is there some like on a shelf somewhere? <laughs> Guys, like, yeah. Other person called earlier. We already checked. There's none back there. And, like, <laughs> my buddy hung up the phone and was like flabbergasted. He was like, "What did he mean? They were out of internet." Yeah, and like okay. we called, we, we called back, and it just turns out that they had like you know some problem with some tower or something in the area, so they had to pull the whole network. <laughs> That's down. really fucking funny. But like, yeah, he was like for hours. He was sitting there going, "Out of internet? How do you?" <laughs> How do you get out of internet? Like, is internet a commodity that you can just like? Can I get a truckload of internet? And he was just like so stressed out that his entire worldview of how internet worked like was completely blown. Um, yeah, hey, Western Pennsylvania, where I went to college, not great for internet either. And again, you've got the choice of like Comcast or hopefully Verizon is in the area, and that's even before they did FiOS. So like, yeah, not great. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up with five G? Is that does that is that real? Supposedly. Yeah, but you have to be in a major network yeah. at this point to have it. Like, if you're in New York City, yeah, you got five G. People but keep like, telling me it's bullshit. People keep telling me it's just four G, and they're just like they're just telling people it's five G. So well, there was, um, if I remember right, it wasn't T Mobile. It, or it was AT and T. Mobile? Yes, yeah, somebody was phone. like, yeah, we've loaded our 5G network, but really they just changed the icon on people's phones. And it was nice. like, I think in some markets it became slower because they were working on like the towers to actually uh, create 5G. Nice. Um, so yeah, that that was a problem. But as far and as I know, if you're in like uh, like the New York City or LA, Boston area, like you do have 5G on Verizon. Well, and yeah. you actually have to have a 5G phone. Yes, yeah, your phone has to <laughs> so be So nobody has 5G in America. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think um I want to say uh Samsung and how Yeah, know. like the last Note or the last yeah. Galaxy had both antennas. So when they did activate it, you were able to switch over, but um yeah, a lot of people's phone I does I does Apple have 5G yet? No, I'm not, not sure yet. any They're of the iPhones. Off. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that and that's just they're waiting until yep. you know that situation doesn't occur, so they actually have a market, so you can sell it to Susie in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota, and she can actually see the benefits of it. But that'll be fast enough to actually get this uh get this Twitch stream running at a decent clip next time, so that's good. In the future, run a cable. Run a cable. I should. It's be a long. Hey, if I could get four G speeds at home, I would be fine with that. <laughs> I just have too I'm much just, shit running on my. Uh... I'm just over here with my good internet. Yeah, your good internet. The one thing. I just want to be able to like uh, do this podcast and like maybe have my part Netflix or something without you guys just hearing a robot talking. <laughs> well, I'm ready to hear a robot talk, and uh, by that I mean whatever video game I'm playing, uh, which is Ring Fit Adventure, and the robots therein are going to be talking in a second here. So I'm going to sign us off for the evening. Why don't you uh why, why don't you why don't you send us off with uh your best impression of that video game encouraging you to keep working out? Yes! You're gonna sign off! Great job signing off! Yes! You can do it! You can sign off! I'm Dolly Demovsky. Who are you, Sam? Well, I do want to punch you just as bad as I want to punch <laughs> that character.
So uh, you're doing a great yes! impression. It's always like uh, he's always yelling, "Yes!" It's like slow down, Ring Ringo. Yeah. Um, you can f- I'm you can. I'm Dolly Can find me at Dolly Domofsky. Where can we find you, Sam? Nowhere. Uh, you can only find me here, and occasionally I'm uh, not. Uh, so, uh, you know, I try to be consistent, but just about every other week I'm here, yeah, uh, and I go. do not have a public facing consistently uh, inconsistent, and that's what we like yeah, about you. I do not have public facing social media. However, I will say that for next week, I am hoping to get a few what? hours into the uh, hit new early access game, not for broadcast. Yeah. Uh, because my day job uh, sometimes has to deal with broadcasting. I'm really uh, curious to see your thoughts I would, on this one. It, you know, I watched this sort of trailer, and uh, some of it on face value, I'm like, okay, I understand you changed some of it because giving somebody a TriCaster layout mm-hmm. makes no sense and like a clickable interface. But um, I get I get you. We'll see. We'll see. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I guess it does have like a papers please tilt to it a, mm-hmm. little, a little bit. So we'll have to see. But yep. I should hopefully be uh, able to report back on my next uh, trip Sweet. to the show here on that. And that uh, that ASMR fingernail clipping that you just all heard. Yeah, thank you. Aaron, Twitch affiliate. Scott, I had a hang, I had a hang now. Get a hang. <laughs> Work me for I, uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Scratty Bones. Uh, I had a Wiccan come into my store the other day, and I asked them if they knew <laughs> of any yeah, good. Dude. I asked them if they had knew of any good necromancers, and they just looked at me weird and walked out. And I did it for you, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, yeah. How about that? Uh, don't tweet at me because you, you won't be able to find me. But if you if you know of a um, a let's say a neutral good or better uh, uh, necromancer <laughs> from any form of media, uh, I don't want your fanfic. I'm sorry because um, I'm working on my own. Uh, no, uh, if you have any good examples of a good necromancer, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, I just kind of want to see somebody brought up the necromancer from Venture Brothers, which honestly is pretty good. And the only example of him being bad that I could see is he told some redneck that cut him off or something like that his exact time and uh, means of death, which is actually like <laughs> a pretty badass. Like, That's a, a pretty, ballsy you know, move. Like, funny thing. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just curious of that, uh, if you have any uh, of those examples. All right, you can find us I thought, I thought, I thought a I thought a Wiccan would, but apparently not. No. Seeking Necromancer. So we've named our episode this week. Seeking <laughs> nice necromancer. guy seeking nice ne- necromancer. Nice guy uh, seeking nice necromancer. What, uh, what about iZombie? Did somebody bring her back? Because that would be a necromancer, right? And she, uh, like, she turned into a cop. Or she, something, yeah, but she's a zombie, right? Like, just the world brings you back, or in yeah. a, a disease. Well, that's what I'm asking, back. right? Like, if if like some necromancer injected her with a formula that brought her back, I've never seen the show. No, I think she just gets bit and dies, and then comes back. And I then think comes back, that, and now she's like of. the princess in all those Christmas prince movies on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that uh, honestly, I Zombie has a good. So I need to watch more of that show. Is, um, yeah. that, they she eats the brain show, and gains they, their think... powers. Yeah, I, I mean, it ran for like five or six seasons. Okay. So that's that's about all you can ask for nowadays in the worlds of uh, Netflix. <laughs> that's true. All right, that's it. Sidequesting.com, Sidequesting TV at Sidequesting. We'll see we you all on the next Sidequest. Okay. Uh, hey, did you guys watch Picard? No, I, don't, I need to get that. I need to get it. Nah. I'm load it up for free. Uh, you I'm brought sorry. up you brought up Wiccan. I have a nice uh, little pagan story that could go alongside of it, but I didn't want to tell it on the podcast. 